Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Southern Springs Presbyterian Church. Um, have a few announcements for you. The session is meeting on the 13th, which is Thursday. We'll be doing that meeting at 5 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall, which is a change from where we normally meet, simply because I want to be able to um, preview the new website for you. And for the rest of you, that means that we are going to have a website and we're hoping to launch it by the 1st of February. So that's been something that Donna and I, or I'm sorry, Chris and I have been working on for, what, two months, a couple of months? Yeah. So we're both really excited about how that's turning out. And um, once session gets to have their input, then we'll get ready to launch it. Uh, this congregational meeting, our annual meeting, will be held Sunday the 16th, um, right after worship, so please plan on staying for that. Um, I expect the report will be ready before too long, so we can have a chance to look at that ahead of time. Uh, PW meeting has been changed um, from the 14th to February 4th at 2, and that's going to be in the Fellowship Hall. And I believe you all for PW are just are talking about the soup luncheon, is that right? That's going to be the primary uh, piece of business. Well, I don't know if it's primary, but it's definitely on there. Okay. Fair enough. Um, and one other announcement that did not get into the bowl, I'm going to be on vacation from the 27th of this month through the 3rd of February. I'm going to take a week off and get away from zero weather and, and six inches of snow. So, I know, I know, I'll come back and it'll be minus whatever and add six more inches of snow on top, but <laughs> that's okay. I need, I'm going to take that break. Um, Tammy has agreed to preach and we're very grateful for this. Tammy's agreed to preach on the 30th, so thank you, Tammy, for doing that. Are there other announcements? Bob? Well, Peter uh, had made a request to session uh, to uh, update our hymnals, and uh, so we're in the process of, of doing that. But when the Pocatello Church heard about this update for us because they have shrunk in size and they had a whole bunch of uh, extra hymnals apparently so they are donating to us 50 of the hymnals uh, which we're going to be buying some more but they're donating 50 of those which comes out to almost a thousand dollars right it's about nine hundred dollars worth of hymnals they're donating to us and I'm going to try to pick those up uh, this coming week, so they may start showing up in, in the pews okay. shortly. Great. Yeah, we, um, we calculated that when we decided to pick a new hymnal, we calculated that we were going to need 90 to fill up the sanctuary and the choir area. And Pokey's donating us donation of 50 gets us uh, over halfway to that. So that saves us a considerable amount of money. So that's a blessing. And so if you are in contact with anybody at the Pokey Church, please tell them thank you. Other announcements? All right, let's take a moment of silence to connect and to prepare our hearts and our minds to worship Almighty God. Amen. God loves us and calls us each by name. Now, last week we introduced a new introit for those of you who weren't here. So, um, so what we're going to do is, while I light the candles, Marilyn's going to play it through once, and then we will sing it. We will sing both verses. So, please. Um, Prepare your hearts for holy, holy.
Please join in our call to worship as printed in the bulletin. The voice of God resounds upon the water. The Spirit of God hovers over the stream. The Son of God is named Beloved, and all who worship shout out glory. Ascribe to the Lord majesty and strength. And we have kids today, so I'm going to invite the kids to come up for just a bit for children's time. They don't want to? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's stand and join in our opening hymn number 492, Baptized in Water. <laughs> and join me in the unison prayer of confession as printed in your bulletin. We are precious in your sight, yet we often forget that we are your beloved. We confess that our love is fickle and inconstant. We follow our selfish goals and deny that our way of life harms others and hurts your world. We are sorry and we want to change. Create in us a clean heart. Strengthen our resolve. Reconcile us to one another and bless us with your peace. Amen. Beloved, God forgives your sins. Know that you are pardoned and be at peace to love the Lord and serve the world. Thanks be to God. And as we have reconciled to God, let us reconcile with one another through a sharing of Christ's peace, saying to one another, the peace of Christ be with you and responding and also with you. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Go ahead. Yep. We come now to the time of our prayers, our joys, and our concerns. And I'll start out by saying I was texting with Maisie this morning, and she is um, still not quite feeling up to being in church, and she said that she will see us next week, so we want to keep Maisie in our prayers. We also want to keep all of our travelers. Um, I know Milton Grace left for uh, Southern California last Sunday, and they'll be back sometime next summer, I guess. I guess. Um, also, Vita is in, in Pocatello visiting family, and um, Nona is traveling to Malad this morning to cover the pulpit there. So we want to pray for all of our folks who are traveling. Other, other prayer requests, joys or concerns? Sue. Oh, okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Are there others? Yeah. No. Well, Maisie's birthday is tomorrow. Yes. And I know she would love a card or a ball or something. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm not going to ask because a gentleman doesn't ask how old. I think she would probably tell you she was born in 1929. Well, see, it's fine if she tells me, but my mama taught me never to ask. It's, uh, <laughs> Other fair concerns. Tammy. Um, my sister Deborah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's go to God in prayer. Holy and merciful God, 
It's a beautiful day out there today, and we are grateful for your creation, even when it gets cold and even when there's a lot of snow on top of it. Because we know all of that comes from you. And we take a moment to express our gratitude for deer wandering through the backyard and deer who are not afraid to, to come close to people. And we pray and express our gratitude for those here in the city who work diligently to clear the snow and to keep our roads as safe as possible for us. Holy God, we ask your mercies and blessings on those of us who are not here today, be it illness, be it travel, be it not wanting to get out of the snow. We know that your hand lifts them up, and we hope that your spirit is with them today. And Holy God, we pray today for the following people on our prayer list. We pray for Sue Smith, for Jim and Josette Hunsinger. We pray for Maisie, Rossi, and the Lemire family. And we pray these things saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for the family of Travis Hopkins, for Doreen Meza, for Kristen, Sharon Short's step-granddaughter Angie, for Dixie Ledbetter. And Lord, we pray these things saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for Dustin Holston, McKay Hansen, Pastor Joy, Kathy Hogan, and Damian Henderson. And God, we pray these things saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for the Belize mission. We pray for our sister church, Malad. We pray for victims of violence and disaster. We pray for our country and its leaders and those fighting COVID. And we pray these things saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray too for peace in our homes and our communities and the world. And God, we continue to lift up the people in Colorado who are dealing with the aftermath of wildfires. And we also lift up the people in the South and in the Midwest who are still recovering from massive tornadoes. And God, we take a moment of silence to lift those silent prayers that we hold deep within our hearts. We, we hold those deep in our hearts and so that we may lift them to you. And we take a moment of silence for that. And we pray all these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and join in hymn number 404, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Amen. Please be seated. Our first, our first scripture reading today is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks down the cedars. The Lord breaks down the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. 
The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. And our second reading today is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Sibia in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, who I formed and who I made. Our third reading this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 through 22. As the people were filled with, accept, with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chafe he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations he proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod, the ruler who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus was also baptized, and was, Jesus was praying, and the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Sisters and brothers, these readings are God's words for God's people. And together we respond by saying, Thanks be to God. So today we celebrate and commemorate Jesus' baptism. And it's always a bit jarring to me when the baptism of the Lord Sunday rolls around because it comes so close to Christmas. One minute we're celebrating the birth of our Savior and the next minute, BAM! We've skipped ahead 30 years and it's time for Jesus to get baptized. The only record we have of what's been going on in Jesus' life in those intervening years is found in Luke 2, 41-52, which recounts the episode of a 12-year-old Jesus 
discussing theology with priests in the temple in Jerusalem. And the other part of that story, of course, is the fact that Joseph and Mary lost track of Jesus. And I always think of that story as a great example of both Jesus' humanity running away from his folks and his divinity um, debating theology with the priests in the temple. This one incident is all we know about the childhood of Jesus, and it makes us wonder what other information may have existed about Jesus' childhood, which was ultimately excluded from the New Testament when the canon was finalized. We'll probably never know what Jesus the boy was really like, but it's kind of fascinating to consider the possibilities. Today's reading recounts both an ending and a beginning. In a very few words, Luke describes the end of the preaching ministry of John the Baptist and the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. John the Baptist, that wild-haired, animal-skin-wearing hippie who only ate organic, had been running around all over the place proclaiming God's word, gathering disciples, and baptizing people. It got to the point where folks are seriously wondering if this wild-haired, animal-skin-wearing hippie prophet, who only ate organic, might actually be the long-awaited and long-hoped-for Messiah. In verse 15, we hear about a people who were filled with expectation and questioning whether or not John was the one. Given what was going on in the lives of those folks, Belonging for someone who could lead them out of the difficulties makes sense. John, however, is totally clear about the fact that someone more powerful than himself is coming, who's going to baptize people with fire and with the Holy Spirit. John is very aware that it's time to pass the baton and exit the world stage. Now, the lectionary omitted verses 18 through 20 from today's reading, and I do believe those missing verses are an important part of the story, so I included them this morning. Let me read those verses for you again. So with many exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod, the ruler, who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them by shutting up John in prison. Now, I get why these verses got left out. They seem out of context and completely interrupt the flow of the story. If I were in charge of editing the lectionary, I probably would have left these verses out, too. However, I think it's important to understand that as clunky and out of context as these verses might be, they are Luke's way of making it clear that John's time is over and that a new day has begun. So... Jesus has come to be baptized, and you might be wondering why the Son of God, the one who is without sin, would need to be baptized at all. And it's certainly a question that the author of Matthew's Gospel pondered, as we see in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 15, which read, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. When you consider the fact that Jesus always stood and still stands with those who are marginalized and oppressed, I think it's completely understandable why he came to be baptized. It wasn't because Jesus had to be cleansed from sin. Instead, I believe that Jesus chose to be baptized as an act of solidarity with a nation and a world of sinners. Jesus simply got in line with everyone who had been broken by the wear and tear of this selfish world and who had all given up on themselves and their God. From the line of downtrodden and sin-sick people formed in hopes of new beginnings through a return to God, Jesus joined them. At his baptism, Jesus identified with the damaged and broken people who need God. So, that raises a question. 
Do we truly identify with sinners and are we willing to get in line with them in order to welcome and work for them as sisters and brothers in Christ? Or do we feel that respectable and successful people are the only people God calls to build up the kingdom? Now there's no record in any of the four gospel accounts that Jesus said anything at all out loud at his baptism. But afterwards, after his baptism, Jesus prays. He isn't just coming to us sinners, he's also coming to God in prayer. He does not undertake his ministry of teaching and healing based on his own power and abilities, but instead he understands that the source of his strength lies beyond himself. It's the Holy Spirit that will encourage him along the way, even when the way becomes difficult. So it's worth asking, do we truly depend on the Holy Spirit and our connection to God through prayer to provide us with the spiritual stamina to go out into the world and make a difference in people's lives even when it's difficult? At his baptism, Jesus is ordained the Messiah by a God who loves him and tells him so. This powerful affirmation, this calling from God, will sustain Jesus through a time of trials and tribulations in the desert, and then through the joys and trials of a faithful ministry. The love God showed Jesus is ex the exact same love God shows each and every one of us. God calls all of us his children, his beloved, and makes it very clear how proud he is of us. In that powerful affirmation, is that powerful affirmation enough to sustain us as we work to bring the joy of the gospel to those around us? John Lee, a Presbyterian theologian, writes that in baptism, the child's name is called because our faith is that God thought of this child before this child was. That God gave to this child an identity, an individuality, a name, and a dignity that no one should dare to deny. Human existence has its origins not in the accidents of history, but in the will and intention of the Lord God, creator of heaven and earth. God thought of each of us before we existed. Think about that for a minute. Our identity, our individuality, our dignity, our very name, all comes from God through the waters of baptism. God has affirmed in the most powerful way possible his love for each of us. And is it any wonder that every iteration of our Christian faith considers baptism to be a sacrament? Now you're going to notice that I've moved the baptismal font to the foot of the chancel steps. This is a permanent change. And I did it because I believe it's important to have a visual reminder of the undeniable fact of God's amazing and unfeeling love for us each and every time we step foot in the sacred space. And one of the reasons we baptize in public during worship is to give us all an opportunity to remember who we belong to and who calls us beloved. In baptism, we die to sin and are raised up to a new life in Christ Jesus. This new life is guided by the gift of the Holy Spirit, which gives us the strength and stamina to stand in solidarity with the bruised, the broken, and the downtrodden. It becomes a firm foundation giving us the strength and courage to stand with the marginalized, the oppressed, and the weary, just as our Savior did and does to this very day. The new, the new life we are given is a mark of just how much God loves us, and that love marks us as God's own beloved children. What then do we do with this wonderful gift? Do we hoard it like a miser who hoards his wealth? Or does receiving this gift compel us to go out into a sin-sick world and share it with all we come in contact with? My hope and prayer for all of us 
is that we open our hearts to accepting God's amazing love, not just for ourselves, but for everyone around us, and reveling in the indisputable fact that we are indeed God's beloved. And then, believing that we are God's beloved, going out into the world to remind others that they too are undeniably, and without exception, beloved of God. Amen. I'll invite the ushers to come forward at this time to receive the morning offering. Gracious God, we return a portion of your bounty to you for the use of the furtherance and building up of your kingdom in this place, in our country, and in our world. We ask your blessings on those who gave and those who are unable to give. We know that your mercy and grace shines equally on both. And all of these things we pray in your Son's holy name. Amen. Please remain standing and join us for our closing hymn, number 361, How Firm a Foundation.
sisters and brothers, we have been with Jesus to the River Jordan. River of life, river of promise. And children of the covenant, remember that we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as God's beloved forever. And may God watch between me and thee while we are absent, one from another. And all God's people said, Alleluia. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.